contract that allows us or allows companies to actually build autonomous machines. This is something I have not discussed, uh, but we, we wrote about great lengths in the book. What's holding back machines at the moment is, is not technology as much, it is also technology, but it's also liability issues, for example. So this is, I think, the more pressing problem. How, how do we integrate machines in, in our, like, uh, legal systems, for example. It's not a question, it's a more um, thing to, to look at. Um, the question is, what about social bonding to the machines? Uh, for example, in healthcare or raising children or something like this. Um, are the people, uh, is, is the mankind able to survive if they, if they bond to, to um, to machines instead of, of other humans. I mean, that's a big topic. I think uh, everyone yeah. should should think about. Yeah, maybe just one comment. I mean, lots of people bond to animals, and uh, there are some people on the extreme side that would rather marry their dog than a real partner because the dog is more obedient. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it will happen, and but I think there's a widespread of uh, of possibilities. Hi. Uh, I don't know. It's like consciousness is a math hub for for what you're talking. But what do you think in the long term of machines and and software uh, reaching consciousness in some point of time? I I think that what I'm trying to argue for is that that we can already build self-conscious machines in a sense that I would like to understand to some degree self-consciousness as some sort of uh, self-monitoring system. So that part we could already implement. Um, You've asked your question or no? Okay. Whether that creates okay. real self-consciousness, I don't know. But I, I see no fundamental uh, problem with it. But I mean, it's a, it's a question of complex, uh, complexity. Like self-aware. Pardon? Like self-aware. I mean, self-awareness in, in the sense that it, it knows, if you look at a large machine, let's say a power plant, it's to some extent self-aware. It knows which parts are working, which parts are not. Um, on that level, I think we have it, and on a well, I guess it's also very difficult to, to uh, and this is definitely beyond my field and my understanding, how to define self-awareness in, in uh, people. Um, uh, I'm, I was very impressed from how you described the difference between the tools um, in earlier times and the tools we have now, we are using now. Um, but I'm wondering, isn't it possible, or I mean, we are striving to it, to develop or redevelop those old tools, those extensions to the man, to make um, or, or to improve human in itself. Um, don't we have, the, or is, is the major problem not that we will have um, very intelligent machines in a few hundred years, but more that we will be get new men with a, a group of men, not all of course, because it's always so. I mean, we are here lucky in Europe, we have much money and so, so we can develop us and we can um, improve us. And so if we have the ability to improve us technology, we will do that for us, of course. But I don't think we will think um, on other, or other regions of the world um, as no, I mean we don't do it. Yeah. Is, is there the ethic problem not that, or, or that is more, um, nearer in time to us, is this not the one that we will get at a point where we are so much better, in quotes, than uh, the rest of the world that um, uh, yeah, they never can co um, catch up to us? I, I don't know whether they cannot, they could not catch up, but we'd like to not let them catch up. I mean, that's why yeah. we spend so much money on developing uh, weapon systems, because we don't have, we are not many that are so rich, but we, and, and we don't like to die for it, so 
that's one of the driving motors behind building, building uh, robots for, for military applications. But should we, um, we should start to think now about um, how far we want to develop our Western society and um, how we want to integrate the whole world into it. I think that's a, a really ethical question we should discuss or our society should start to discuss now before we become so... Uh, but I could developed. not agree more, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen. I think progress will just keep coming. And we cannot say, oh, stop everyone, wait a, wait a minute, uh, let's, let's think about it first. So I think we, we really we, we have to... Yes, we can. And, and that... Are we pressed on time? Sure. Um, we, have, we have 15 minutes. Okay. We have 15 minutes remaining. Okay. Um, but if you, I, I wanted to integrate that into the into the presentation, but this is uh, some flash uh, thing, and I couldn't get it in. If you look at, at um, the mortality rate, or the not mortality, what's it called? Um, the the life expectancy. Um, has increased dramatically due to um, progress over the uh, last, let's say, 50 or 100 years. And it has also increased in the poorest region of the world. Of course, it has increased a lot more in, in uh, Western Europe and in, in the rich parts of the world. But we see, if we look at the, the uh, for example, as an, I think it's a good indicator, mortality rate, uh, uh, not mortality rate, life expectancy is a good indicator. And, and there we see that across the board this has gone up. Yes, um, I, I find your um, vision of the future really sort of heartwarming. This this idea that that you know everybody would have a sort of stipend and people would just do the work that they would want to do and be, feel called to do, um, and that sort of mundane tasks would be would be uh, given to robots. Um, but I feel like I've got sort of a nagging in the back of my head, and I, I'm not quite sure how to articulate it. Um, but it seems to me like a lot of innovation comes from places where people really have to work. Um, you know, for example, India or, uh, you know, you have, you have parts of the world where there is no social contract and people need to um, have to work and have to find new ways and new strategies and, and, and sort of compete with each other. I mean, maybe it's just my own sort of ingrained uh, Protestant work ethic that I have trouble uh, overcoming here, um, but c could you respond to that? Or do, 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 yeah, does, that, does I, that seem a problem to you? Or, I mean, this sort of idea it of could motivation be. or? Uh, I, I would not rule it out, but I have not seen the evidence for it. Mm. I mean, we, we see a lot of uh, development coming out of, for example, India or China, mm -hmm. but we also have lots of people living there. Mm. So I don't, I don't know what happens if you normalize the numbers, whether it's, it still holds true or not. So you'd see that purely as a, as a numbers, there are a lot of people there, so they're innovating. I mean, there's this, this saying that, that China has more A students mm. than the U.S. has students. So it, it, I just have to see that this yeah, could yeah. be a reason. Yeah, thank you. Um, would you grant autonomous machines rights, like the right to refuse? No. Why not? <laughs> that would be a difficult world. I don't know. Uh, it's probably not up to me, luckily. But um, it might happen, yeah. I mean, it, I, I would not rule it out. It, it, but then again, these machines are evolving under very strong pressure to be obedient. So they might actually like it. Yeah. Of course, I mean, you buy the machine that really helps you, and, and so if I build a machine, I build a machine the way that it likes to help you. Okay, um, I have a two question. First, um, according to the fact uh, robot is a creation of the human, so robot has the good and the bad of the human in a certain way, because uh, it will reproduce the mistake of the human because the human is a creator. So uh, we are in a society today which is more or less decreasing. Less space for like uh, human science in the school or you know, teaching human science in the school or philosophy or whatever. 
So do you think the development of robots is going to reflect that aspect